You've probably been wondering where Fuzzy and Nuts have been these last few months. And sadly, we have some bad news. Because Fuzzy's been doing some hard time. Maximum security prisons are tough places to be, with many reports over the years showing that they are the most violent places to serve time in the world. With gangs, violence, and poor food and little privacy, it's no surprise that some inmates will do anything to escape serving out their full sentence. In 1962, what may be the most famous prison escape in history was carried out by Frank Morris and John and Clarence Anglin. Over its 29-year history as a federal penitentiary, 13 escape attempts had all ended in failure. Yet on June 11, 1962, Morris and the Anglin brothers were determined to be the first to successfully break out of Alcatraz and flee to safety. The team had spent six months sawing at the ventilation ducts in their cells with hidden saw blades, and then tried to cross the San Francisco Bay on a homemade raft made out of raincoats. The three were never found or heard from again, and it's believed that all three inmates drowned in the notoriously dangerous waters surrounding Alcatraz Island. In recent years, though, an even more high-profile prison escape took place on July 11, 2015, when infamous Mexican drug cartel chief El Chapo escaped from a Mexican penitentiary via a secret tunnel that his henchmen had been digging for months from a mile outside the prison. Infamous for escaping from prison, El Chapo has now been sentenced to the Maximum Security ADX facility in Colorado, a prison described as so secure that it would take bribing a warden and the entire prison staff to successfully break out. It's clear that though prisons are extremely secure places, they're certainly not escape-proof. But suppose you were dragged off to Maximum Security prison like poor Fuzzy, perhaps for a crime that you did not commit. How could you break out and make a run for freedom? First, you're going to need help. In the past, prison facilities were typically converted military facilities, like in the case of Alcatraz, or well-constructed but with many structural flaws. Often, they were allowed to fall into disrepair to the point that eventually a clever and very patient prisoner could grind or saw their way through the crumbling concrete of his cell. In the last few decades, though, there's been a radical shift in the way prisons are designed, with everything from engineers to psychological experts and even escape magicians being consulted on the design of each individual cell and the materials used. A modern cell is typically made of steel, which resists corrosion very well and is much harder to try to tunnel through than concrete, which can weaken with age. The cells are also constructed as individual units that fit into place within the structure of the actual building, meaning that there are no weak points to exploit, such as aging ventilation ducts or toilet pipes. Breaking out of a modern maximum security prison is definitely going to be difficult, but not impossible, as seen in the case of convicted killers David Sweat and Richard Matt, who broke out of their cell on June 6, 2015. But how did they do it? And how can you replicate the escape yourself? First, as we mentioned, you're going to need outside help. Modern prisons strictly regulate the movement and personal belongings of each prisoner, so trying to sneak power tools to your cell on your own isn't going to get you anywhere but thrown into isolation. You should try to bribe a guard or maintenance worker into leaving some tools behind or letting you sneak them back to your cell. In the case of Sweat and Matt, this is exactly what is suspected to have happened. With tools at your disposal, you can start cutting your way through the steel wall at the back of your cell, where it connects to the building's <laughs> maintenance areas and pipe work. Before you hop through, you're going to need to fool the other guards who conduct two-hour headcounts all throughout the night. So simply take a bunch of your clothes and arrange them under the covers of your bed so it looks like you're still snuggled up tight. Next, you're going to want to head through your escape hole and down into the very basement level of the building. Your best bet will be to locate a heating pipe, which are typically easy to identify as they carry hot water that makes the pipe warm to the touch. Follow this pipe into the very bowels of the building until you see it start to head outwards. At that point, you're going to need your tools again to start chiseling through the concrete around the pipe so you can squeeze through. At last, you get to the foundation of the prison itself, and here is where you're going to have to get a little bit lucky. Major buildings like prisons that house hundreds of people typically have two major outlet pipes that connect to the outside world. One is a large steam pipe to vent excess heating, and the other is the main sewer line full of, well, the sewage of hundreds of people. If you manage to find yourself at the steam vent, you could cut into it and crawl your way into freedom, perhaps with some minor scalding but otherwise relatively unscathed. If, however, you happen to find yourself at the sewage pipe, we hate to break it to you, but there's only one way to freedom, and it's not going to smell or feel very nice.
Once you've waded through tons of muck, though, congratulations, you've officially broken out of prison. You'd better enjoy your newfound freedom as quickly as you can, because while prison escapes are rare, getting away with it is even rarer, and most prison escapees are back in police custody within just a matter of weeks.